I have here three different Kindles. Um, I just received two days ago uh, a new Kindle Voyage, which is the uh, top spec e-reader from Amazon. And uh, now this is quite an expensive uh, piece of kit uh, for just a reader, um, but it is their uh, top range uh, one. I also have a Kindle Paperwhite, which I have used for the past uh, two years. And it, w it was one of the first uh, Paperwhites to come. In fact, I uh, ordered this from the USA because there was uh, a considerable delay between them launching in the USA and the UK a couple of years ago. So this actually came all the way from the, the USA. And then my first Kindle, which is a Kindle keyboard uh, over here. And I thought it was fascinating to see uh, over the space of about four and five years uh, the changes between these Kindles. Now, I don't have any earlier than this because, of course, there were earlier Kindles uh, than this one, which were even bigger and bulkier. But even over these three generations, now these are the top of the range Kindle e-readers. So it's not the Kindle Fire, which is the Android tablet, uh, but the Kindle e-readers over the last four or five years. And there are some remarkable uh, differences between them. Uh, each of them, uh, I, I ordered the, ori the uh, original leather case that was designed for each of the readers as I like to keep my equipment in good order and the investment of a proper fitted case uh, has always seemed like a good idea. So, how we look at these, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare, make a, a review of the new Kindle Voyage because you can read those uh, or view those online uh, already, but it's really just the comparison between them and how the state of the art has moved on uh, in these readers. The first one, um, you can see it's bulky, thick uh, in comparison to, to, the, to the new ones. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this holds it securely. You've got huge kind of buffers around here in case you drop it. So it's, it's kept in, in, in good nick. And uh, this has got a bit floppy over time as the elastic is kind of, kind of wearing. And um, it is held in place by these kind of uh, the, the, these clips here, which uh, uh, keep the the actual reader in. Now the case is pretty well made, it has to be said, and this was the the better of the cases, uh, in that uh, these are contacts, and uh, if you pull this thing out, you have illumination. Um, which you need because this Kindle does not have any built-in lighting uh, on the screen itself. Quite a few folks I know have had these, have had, uh, had issues with them, with the screen doing some weird things. Uh, I suspect probably after they've been dropped at some point. Uh, this is still the, the original one I had. I've had. Not had any problems with it. It has been used by my wife for the last two years when I got the, the paper white and moved to that. And I don't just use these for reading, though I do use them for reading. I also use them as a, a minister. Uh, I use them for um, my kind of source for notes when I'm taking uh, leading uh, either meetings or uh, leading services at the church. So uh, I, I prefer this to um, using a tablet uh, because the way the screen works under different lighting conditions. Uh, I've tried using my uh, Nexus tablet and I just don't like the, the, the reflections you get on the, on the screen. I uh, much prefer uh, the simplicity of an e-reader for that. So all of these, uh, uh, this one has yet to be used. It will be used on Sunday, uh, but these two have been regularly used uh, for that purpose. Of course, the physical buttons uh, for moving the pages on 
and the refresh of the screen with every uh, page click uh, where you see the screen kind of blacking out in between, which means there's no ghosting on the images, but you do get that rather distracting uh, change each time. And of course, you've got the keyboard, the physical keyboard uh, down here. There are a couple of things that are on this that are not on these, which I kind of miss. And one of them is at the end of the, when you get to the end of the book, if it's really a book you really enjoy, uh, you can post to Facebook and just say what you liked about that book and give it a, a review and it goes up onto Facebook. Now, you can still give a review on these. It asks for a star rating, but it doesn't post it on Facebook any longer. And I had quite a few conversations with people uh, when I had, was using this Kindle uh, because of a book that I'd been reading. And so I'm, I actually miss that part of the software uh, that's, uh, that's in this old Kindle keyboard. Uh, but there you go. Um, it is a little bit worn here. It's definitely seen a few better days. But anyway, let me get this out of out of here and keep it out of the out of the case. And um, the next one is the Paperwhite. Again, it's a leather case. Uh, better in that it is uh, there's a magnet in the case which both holds it uh, shut but also automatically turns the, the Kindle on and off. And being the paper white, this one is uh, illuminated and the quality of the screen was a notable improvement on the, uh, the old Kindle keyboard. I quite like this because it's like a book, opening uh, a, a book, a folio kind of thing uh, there, which uh, is nice. And it is very securely uh, attached with this kind of big rubber bumper that goes all the way around the the paper white itself and uh, your, your USB and your power down the bottom here. I have dropped this a few times. I try to be very careful, um, but I have dropped it and there is, you can see a scuff in the leather here uh, where uh, that has dropped and also a kind of scuff there. Um, where it has been dropped. However, the Kindle itself has been absolutely fine inside uh, because the case is very, very secure. Uh, so I like that uh, a lot. I suspect I've only had this thing out of its case maybe once or twice since putting it in two years ago. I have no idea how to get it out. <laughs> Arr, brute force is probably gonna have to come into play here to pop it out. Uh, yeah, it's starting to come, but boy, he doesn't want to. I suspect down in one of these corners would be the best place to start uh, to get it out. Oh, yo, 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 that is quite a challenge. So you can see this case very uh, secure indeed in keeping your, your Kindle uh, safe. Right, it is coming. Uh, there's probably an easier way of doing that. And there it is, uh, the Kindle Paperwhite. The Kindle Voyage, it's another leather case. I've kind of gone for blue, I quite like uh, the, the darker blues. I think it's ink blue, this one, and then this one was cobalt or something like that. And it is the origami case. So this is quite clever, I have to say. Uh, and it does this uh, funky uh, folding thing, uh, if, you, if you get it right, I'm still kind of practicing this, where magnets hold it together and then that creates a stand, which is actually brilliant because I often am reading at a table like this and I like having it standing up uh, like that. So I like that. What I'm not so keen about is the fact that it flips. I mean, I suppose there's no way around it with the origami thing, uh, but that it flips over the top uh, rather than opening as a book. But hey ho, that's it. There is on, on, the, on the bottom of this, uh, on the back of it, a power button because the power button has moved to the back of this, which I think is the same as on the Fire Android tablets. But all, all in all, it's good. Now, hmm, I'm not entirely so sure about the protection, though, of this. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, it is stronger because it's a kind of metal 
case on the, the Kindle itself. But here's the thing, it is only held in place by uh, magnets within here. So I'm not quite sure if you drop this, what's going to happen and whether this thing then goes uh, scudding uh, across the, the pavement. I don't want to check it to see what happens, obviously, but I'm a little bit concerned about that. Uh, but you, it, it just clips in and that's it. And it's held in by magnets. And the, the back is held in by magnets to it when you're using it. Hmm, interesting anyway. Um, however, nice felt uh, inside to protect the, the glass, the, the screen, uh, which is good. Right, well anyway, I will, I will unmagnetize it and, and, and pop it out. Um, in fact, I will flip that over uh, like that. Now, you can start to see the, the similarities and the, the differences between uh, these devices. Uh, these two, very similar in uh, their kind of size and look. The, the, this feels much thinner than the, uh, the old paper, paper white, which has got all dust and stuff on the back of it. Um, the screen is, I mean, that's the whole point of this one, is that it uh, is sharper 300 pixels per inch, as opposed to 212, I think it is. Uh, you do notice a difference, that you definitely notice a difference. Uh, the other thing is the way the backlight works. On this one, it is automatic, and there's a sensor up in the top corner here. Uh, uh, so it, it adjusts the lighting. I like that. I mean, and every tablet does it. So it's putting it into that kind of, you just forget about the lighting because it just happens automatically. Whereas with the old paper white, you have to manually go in and adjust the, uh, the lighting here. Not a big issue, but uh, um, nice when these things disappear and you don't notice them any longer. Of course, on this, you've got the, um, I mean, it's an, the screen is, is fine, it's nice. You do get, because the, I think they improved this on the second generation of the Paperwhite, but at the base, you do get some ghosting that you can see the LED, I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see where the LEDs are down here. And so you do get this kind of wave effect of the light uh, from those. Now, above here, it's nice and smooth. But just at the bottom, you get this light and dark, light and dark. I don't notice that at all on the on the the new Voyage. It's much more um, evenly spread. I've seen some reviews about the Voyage saying that there's a kind of yellow, t blue, you know, kind of bluer white, and then a yellower uh, white at the at the top. I've not noticed that on this this particular uh, one I've got here, and it does seem to be a bit variable. Uh, whether it's a batch issue in manufacturer or not, I don't know. Um, you've got this kind of bezel around here and, and the screen itself is indented and it's a plastic, uh, a plastic screen uh, that you've got there and touch screen, um, which works fine. I, I've had no problems with the touch screen at all uh, on this. The difference between that and the, and the Voyage is that uh, it is a glass screen and it is a completely smooth uh, bezel there's, there's no indent out there so that is that's nice and then they have brought back the the buttons that you used to have here with these touch sensitive areas and um, it's actually pressure sensitive so you just press gently there's a slight haptic vibration from the device and it moves forward these long strips you've got a space up here for back uh, which actually works really well i like it so you can keep your fingers here, it's not going to do anything, and then you just squeeze and it changes page. Uh, you can still do uh, the, the swiping backwards and forwards and the tapping and all of that stuff still works exactly the same. And tapping at the top to get to the menu, which is just exactly the same as on, on that device there, on the paper white. Um, so that works really nicely. But look, I mean, look at the difference in the sizes between these these devices. Uh, and I mean, this was pretty thin in its day. This feels way thinner. This feels really plasticky. It has a slightly soft touch thing on the back, uh, but it feels really plasticky. Whereas this 
It's a kind of soft covered uh, aluminium, I think it is, or magnesium or whatever, but it's metal underneath that. Uh, in fact, what would it be? Because it's magnetic, so um, it's, it, it, that's what's holding it in place. So there's something else uh, going on there. Um, but it is, uh, feels far better quality, this, despite the smaller size. Uh, and of course the screens are exactly the same size, but uh, uh, what a difference in, in the form factor. And especially when it's in the case. It's maybe not so much when you've got it out, but really I, I'm always worried about using devices like this sort of thing when they're not in their uh, protective case. Uh, because you just never know when you are going to accidentally trip, drop or something like that. Um, so if I pop these back in, uh, just like that, uh, you see, you see the, the, the difference in, in size. It is a lot. Um, I had some coats that I could put this in, whereas this will fit inside, into the inside pocket in like a, a suit jacket or something like that. No bother. So it really can slip into a pocket uh, in a way that... Uh, the old one couldn't, or even some, my, my Nexus tablet, which seven inch tablet, is much harder just to pop into a, a pocket than these. Uh, so, uh, there we are. Um, Kindle keyboard. All of these are 3G. Um, I did uh, kind of splash out on the 3G uh, for each of them. Uh, and in fact, I'd ordered uh, the, the Voyage as just, because the Voyage is really quite it, uh, there's no getting around it. It is an expensive device. Uh, because I'd ordered the... Um, uh, I, you know, I'd, when I first ordered it as a pre-order, I went for the Wi-Fi and thought, well, if I need to, I'll just connect it to my uh, phone if I'm out and about and I want it to sync or whatever. However, um, for my birthday, I got some extra uh, gift uh, Amazon vouchers uh, so I was able to, I, I sprang for the 3G version of this, uh, which um, means it's wherever you are, you, it, it's always connected and you can get your, uh, your syncing between devices, because I do read uh, on phone as well, uh, on the app on the phone, so it allows you to do that. So, all in all... Uh, I'm really, I've been, I, I, well, obviously, I, I've kept in with these Kindles and each previous generation gets handed down to somebody else in the family uh, for them to use. We have four different Kindles in the household. We have two Paperwhites. Uh, one, my daughter has one as well. And umpteen phones that have Kindle apps on uh, too. So we, we use the uh, Amazon bookstore a lot. And uh, it's so, I mean, there are a lot of questions about Amazon, but they, I mean, the facility they offer for this really is second to none. It is, it is really good. And the quality of these readers is superb uh, and just getting better with, with each generation. I have a tablet, I have a phone and all of that stuff, but I still like this dedicated reader because there are no distractions with it. And um, if I'm reading on my Nexus tablet, I am so easily distracted by going off onto YouTube or going off to browse on the web or, or the notifications come up about an email or whatever, or a Facebook update or whatever. And you find yourself faffing around, not what, uh, reading, which is what you intended to do, but rather uh, doing uh, cyber faffing as a good friend of mine calls it. So, still love these devices. Uh, because of that reason, there's no distractions and you get right into the book. And this new model really helps you to, to just Im immerse yourself into the reading experience. The, the actual device disappears, so you're only concentrating on the text, which is Funnily enough, the purpose of one of these, it's really to do everything without you thinking about it. And wow, this new Kindle Voyage does that fantastically, as the Paperwhite did a generation before, but just with some nice new touches uh, in, in this one here. So there we are, Kindle Keyboard, uh, Kindle Paperwhite, first generation, 
and the new Kindle Voyage 3G. Uh, thanks for watching.